45 degrees 7 minutes. Right? And next car ka, Master car ka is Venus. 25 degrees 10 minutes. So Mars, is, Mars and Venus are in the same degree. And the principle is if two planets are in the same degree, the higher the higher becomes the Karka. So Mars becomes the Atma Karka and Venus becomes the Amartya Karka. But later in life, when it happens, it's very tough to tough to predict. But when it happens in life, Mars will be displaced from the life. He will he will not become a, he will not be a Karka anymore, a Jarkarka. Venus, who is next to him, he becomes Atma Karka. So for for Kiran, after a while in life, Mars suddenly ceases to be the Atma Karka and Venus becomes the Atma Karka. And Amatagarka slot becomes empty and then some other planet fills in the shoes. And that theory we will go through later. I don't want to do Sarkarka replacement right now. So we will do that later. But because Kiran asked, the, the point here is when Charakarka changes in life from one planet to another planet, then all the dynamics also changes. When Mars was the Atmakarka, basically your soul was focused on the Dharma because he is in the ninth house from, dharma, from Lagna. So the soul basically wants dharma and it is happy, it is contented, there is not much disharmony between your yourself and your soul, there is not much disharmony, everything is smooth. But once Mars is replaced and once Venus becomes Atmakarka, Venus is not so well placed like Mars. He is in the house of overcoming, overcoming obstacles, he is in the house of struggle. So because of that placement, because of that placement of Venus, once the, 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 once there is a transformation, spiritual transformation within you, usually Atmakarka replacement means some kind of spiritual transformation in the person. Once that spiritual transformation takes place, you will have to really struggle a lot. Things seemed easier earlier, but now they will seem difficult. There will be a lot of confusion because six of is involved. There will be a lot of confusion, lot of anxiety, lot of struggle, lot of obstacles that you will have to overcome. And also Venus is the planet of passion and hard work. Venus is the planet of passion, he is the planet of tapasya. So once Venus becomes the Atmakarta, lot of sadhana will be required. And also Venus is the planet of Venus is the planet of marriage. Mm -hmm. Venus is the planet of love, etc. So Venus, when once Venus becomes Atmakarta compared to Mars, he can also get you married. So for example, if you know when you, if you resisted getting married, if you did not want to get married, and if you suddenly became, if you suddenly got married, you can say that irrespective of dasas and other things, probably Venus became your Atmakarta during that time when you got married. In your case, it was a couple of years back or a year back. So probably Mars was Atmakarta until then. When we see the corresponding dasas, it will become more clear. But probably a couple of years back, Venus became the Atmakarta. So once that happens, there will be some struggle that you, you have to go through. That is basically what is shows. So, so the lesson is, when you look at Atmakarka's placement, if you have a replaced Atmakarka, you will have to look at the replaced Atmakarka to see the dynamics. Because it can change, the dynamics can change. And now if you look at the Ar Argadas, let us see who, what are the other influences. So when Venus becomes the Atmakarka, who is he with? He is with Sun, the natural giver of light, the natural Atmakarka. So that is, that is actually conducive. So what it means is there is access to light. Compared to Mars, Venus has access to light because he is with Sun. And who are the other planets causing Argala on him? Rahu is causing Argala on Venus and Saturn is causing Argala. And both the Argalas are strong because both of them are lost of that house. Venus is in a sign worn by Saturn and Rahu and both of them are causing Argala on Venus. So because of that, the Atma comes under the influence of Saturn and Rahu. What does Saturn show? Saturn shows discipline, hard work, etc. Rahu shows Bhoga. He shows luxuries, material, pursuing the material path. So between Saturn and Rahu, there is a tussle. So the, you want to be disciplined, you want to be like a yogi, you want to be like a sadhaka, you want to be like a like an ascetic shown by Saturn in a Jupiter, Jupiterian sign. At the same time, just like Rahu in Pisces shows, you want to have luxuries in life, have a have nice material comfort. So there is a tussle between the two. So once once one of them wins, then direction would be found. But the fact that Venus is in the sixth house from Lagna, Yadusthana from Lagna, it basically shows that there is some struggle. 
So even if Saturn and Rahu did not have an Argala on Venus, an Apagarka, still there would have been struggle. Uh, just on account of Venus being in the sixth house. But this influence here shows, these Argalas on Venus show that, that may be what the struggle is all about. But there will be some struggle because of Venus placement. So, you look at the house occupied by the Atmagarka from Lagna, you also see what kind of sign it is. In the case of Taurus, when Mars was the Atmagarka in your childhood, mm -hmm. then where is Mars in Taurus? What is Taurus? It is a Venusian sign. Venusian sign means basically uh, the focus is on beauty. The focus is on hard work. Taurus is also the sign of working hard. So, you are basically working hard, just doing doing with a sense of duty, whatever, because it's the ninth house. You just do whatever you have to do with a sense of duty, whether it's a puja, whether it's a worship, whether it's a meditation, whatever it is. You just do it with a sense of duty, and that's it, you are done with it. Once you have done it, done the puja, and once you give naivajam or whatever, whatever you are told by your father or your elders to do, once you do it, you are all, you are all set with it. That is the nature of Taurus. On the other hand, when Venus becomes the Atmakarka, where is he? He is not in Taurus. He is in Aquarius. Aquarius is a totally different sign. Compared to Taurus, Taurus is a very practical, down to earth kind of sign. So in Taurus, you just work hard and once you are done with it, you are done with it. But in Aquarius, there is no being done with it. It is a sign of philosophers. Aquarius is a sign of philosophy. So in that sign, there is no end. You just keep pondering, you just keep thinking. So basically the Atmakarka being in Aquarius means your soul becomes a philosopher. Your soul is like a philosopher. So you start philosophizing more. You start thinking a lot. That will be brought when Venus becomes the Atmakarka. So, so you can look at all the signs. For example, somebody has let's say Atmakarka in Libra. Libra is the sign of what kind of sign is it? Balance. Balance. Diplomacy. So such, such a person, the focus of their soul will be on creating harmony in the society, being very balanced, etc. And also it depends on the nature of the planet that he joins with. For example, I don't know if you remember, a couple of classes back, Sanjayji talked about Jawaharlal Nehru. Jawaharlal Nehru had Atmakarka with Venus. So he said the focus is on the nice things in life. Venus shows, Venus is the planet of love, romance. So he, the focus of his soul is on romance, beauty, nice, he, he likes reading poetry, he likes company of beautiful ladies. So that is the focus that Venus is bringing. And here the focus is sun. Once Venus becomes the Atmagarka, he is with sun. So sun will decide what kind of, what kind of focus that Atmagarka should get, just like Venus did in Jawaharlal Nehru's chart. And sun is the power of authority, power, and he is also the planet of light, the eternal light. So you, because this is all happening in Aquarius, the focus of your soul will turn towards the universal light. You want to grab onto that light. You want the philosopher in you is awakened, and then you want to you, you want to understand the universal mysteries. That is what sun sun does. But sun had sun been with Mars or some other planet, Jupiter would have been nice. With Venus, they are not friends. Venus and sun are not friends. They are uh, Venus is actually combusted by sun when they are together. He is burned by sun. So because of that, it's not a happy thing, it's not a pleasant thing. Your soul gets light from the universal source of light. That means from the Paramatma. Your soul can get, get, to, get some light from the Paramatma, from the universal soul. Your individual soul, Venus, can get some light from the universal soul. By pondering. Pondering because it's Aquarius. By pondering and philosophizing. But it's a painful process. Because of the combustion as well as burning, as well as six houses. Okay? So like this, you, you you can see all kinds of influences. It's not that Saturn, Atmagarka, then this is the result. Rahu, Atmagarka, this is the result. Venus, Atmagarka, this is the result. Those are only one, that is only one aspect. When you look at all other aspects, then you can get a better reading. Okay, now let us, let us, we'll come back to Sarkarka's letter. But I do want to, yes, Vijay. How do we see yesterday from Venus? What I was told by my guru is, even if there is a replacement in the Atmagarka, you see from the original Atmagarka only. That is what I was taught. But I was given, I was given confusing signals from my Guru. He talked both the ways. But what he taught me finally was, not finally, what he taught me always, even though he kept giving conflicting signals, what he taught me was, take the original Atmagarka itself. So you should take Mars as the Atmagarka, so the Ishtadevata will be from Jupiter, Jupiter in Aries. 
So it can be Vamana, it can be Sadasiva, it can be Jagannatha. It's some form of Jupiter. Okay? So I want to look at a couple more charts from the point of view of career because we were trying to rectify a few charts. We tried to rectify one chart in the last class and tried to explain the Dasamsa. So I want to take a couple more charts. We'll do your chart. Can you give me the data? Yeah. <coughs> September is happy birthday a few weeks ahead. September 16th, uh, 1961. 1961. Yes. September 16, 1961. Yes, time? Time is around 2.20. 2.24. Around 2.24. Around 2.24 p.m. And the uncertainty is, is, it, uh, is it like 5 minutes or 10 minutes or 20 minutes? About 20 minutes. 20 minutes uncertainty. That's huge. Okay. So he said the time is 2.24 p.m. plus or minus 20 minutes. So it's not, he's not really certain that the time is right, okay? And then city. But the thing is, you should, you should see a few examples like this because this is what you get in real life. In real life, people don't tell you, I was born at 3, 15, 27 seconds. 3 hours, 15 seconds, 27 seconds. People do not have such time. And even when they do, they are not necessarily right. So you should, you should look at a few examples where there is a huge uncertainty. And in some cases, it may be difficult to rectify. And in some cases, you just have a smooth sailing. It just, it just, just depends on what kind of events you can give and whether you, you, you see them in the class. We'll see that. You will understand what I'm saying. Places? Chicken Rabat. Chicken Rabat. So the birth data is September 16, 1961, 2.24 p.m. Give or take 20 minutes. Sikindrabad, India. <coughs> Pardon me? Yeah, is the data right? What is the data then? Yeah. Were you born in 1961? Yep. <laughs> Did you celebrate your birthday on September 16th? <coughs> then... <laughs> yeah, I'm getting like that. 234. 234? Okay, that will not change Nakshatra. Uh, it did. 234 and uh, I'm right in... 234 AM, you mean? No, it's 234 PM. Yeah, that is what I have. Practice? Yeah. Yeah, but 10 minutes nakshatra will not change by a few nakshatra. It is still another. It is another. Yeah. You were at 224. I had wrong. I think you had it right, but I had it. Oh, you were at 224. It was it was another. Yeah. Okay. So is it 234 plus or minus 20 minutes? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay. He thinks it is actually the time is 234. That is the given time, but the uncertainty could be 20 minutes. And the uh, nakshatra is Anuladha. There was some confusion about nakshatra. He, he thought it was coming out to be Savanam, but it is Anuladha, so he is happy now. Okay, now let us look at the chart. We want a couple of incidents. Of course, we will want, but let us, I will ask you just, just, just a couple of minutes. So, <coughs> first we have to see if the Rashi chart is accurate or not. If the Rashi chart is, in, in the Rashi, the Lagna seems to be Dhanus, with the time given. But, if you add 10 minutes to this time, it will go to Makaram from Dhanus. It will go, go from Sagittarius to Capricorn. So, first we have to see whether Dhanus makes sense or Capricorn. Can you, can you, can everybody look at his face once? Can you smile once? Yeah. Okay. Now, can everybody look at his face and then tell me whether Dhanus is right or Makaram? Why? He's very spiritual and... Uh, yeah, like so, I are you saying that Makaragna people are not spiritual? No, not like that. I've yeah. I've been to him for two years, like yeah. the last two years. Yeah. So okay. He is more uh, dharmic. Yeah. That's, that's good. Usually, with Dhanu Lagna, the chance of being dharmic is higher than in other Lagna. Yes. But you find dharmic people in all Lagna. Yes. I'm not Dhanu Lagna person, but I'm reasonably dharmic. I'm sure many of you will be thinking the same way. 
not all of you have dhanun lagna but many of you are dharmic so being dharmic does not necessarily mean it is dhanun lagna right yeah. right yes, but see the ne see the basically physical characteristics and based on the characteristics you can see certain things for example if somebody has really big eyes you can say that there is venusian influence on lagna if somebody has capricorn lagna especially with saturn influencing lagna you will see you will see that there is they have lot of lot of body hair and also especially with capricorn you see very big teeth if lagna is capricorn those people tend to have big teeth capricorn basically in sanskrit is makara and makara means crocodile so they will have teeth like crocodile that's an exaggeration but they will usually have really big teeth to trudging teeth so that is why i asked him to smile and everybody to look at him jupiter is causing the complex for me complexion is very difficult to judge so let us not go to go to complexion but just physical nature does he have big eyes big cheeks big forehead what kind of nose uh, what kind of teeth just based on that you can you can rule out certain lagna so for, for example if you take somebody with virgo lagna usually they are stocky they have they are short or medium they have a stocky build you can see all these characteristics from standard books one good book would be how to get the horoscope by dr bb raman you can see the characteristics of various signs each sign has a characteristic and if you look at the lagna in the rashi chart that should correspond correspond reasonably well to the to the physical outlook of the person when you see what kind of how how he looks there should be a good correspondence so if he had dhan makar lagna he should have definitely he should have protruding teeth and the face face would have been more round and uh, and teeth would have been really prominent in his in his face uh, his teeth would have been definitely prominent when you look at him but that is not really the case and that would have been particularly so if saturn is in lagna makar lagna generally that is true if saturn is in lagna that is particularly true but that is not the case so makar lagna is very unlikely so dhanu lagna is probably right so now with dhanu lagna for me Oh, two hours. Two hours. One and a half hours. Yeah, yeah, almost two hours. So Vijay's point was maybe it is Vrishika. It is not Vrishika. It is Dhanu. Okay. So, so let us let us take Dhanu Lagna. Let us say that Dhanu Lagna is accurate. Now, <coughs> excuse me. Can you give some event? He was married on December eight, nineteen ninety six. In 1986, sir. December 8, married on December 8, 1986. Okay. Now, let us see what the sir he was running at that time. Okay. Just give me a second. Lagna is in the second half of Sagittarius. Sagittarius is a male sign, so it is Moon Hora. Lagna is in Moon Hora. Moon Hora. शुक्ल पक्ष मून हो रहा शुक्ल पक्ष डे टाइम डोंट स्टार्ट यूजिंग द नवांश रखना किरण पॉइंट वर्ज ही हैज वर्गोत्तम लगना सो शुड बी यू सेट ऑफ दिग्रेस है दस यूर पॉइंट राइट या ही वॉज लुकिंग एट द नवा वर्गोत्तम लगना बट डोंट 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 गो टू दैट लेवल ये वी डोंट नो हिज नवांश लगना it could be because he said 40 minutes it could be one of three signs okay. so if you look at the current time it is in sagittarius navamsa and we said that it is not backwards it is only it is not for, forward see here after 2 minute 40 second no not earlier 10 minute 41 seconds later this will change navamsa lagna will change but that will also change the rashi lagna the yes. navamsa lagna goes from sagittarius to capricorn rashi lagna also changes from sagittarius to capricorn because here also we have the same amount of time for change so we know that that is not correct so this this cannot be this the navamsa lagna cannot be capricorn it is sagittarius or scorpio or libra virgo is also probably possible but this is too far so if we especially if we take 2 minutes sorry 20 minutes uncertainty it is one of these two or maximum libra so let's see which one of them makes better sense to explain when he got married now uh what was the year i forgot 1986 right december 5 so 1986 so kedu dasha sahim get married 
Is Ketu capable of getting him married? I was looking at Vimshotri Dasa. Okay? If you look at Vimshotri Dasa, Ketu Dasa started on 1985, October 25. So, in Ketu Dasa, 86 December would be Venus Antar Dasa. So, Ketu Dasa, Venus Antar Dasa, made you, uh, saw you get married. So, is that possible with this Lagna? First, Ketu. Ketu, maybe there is some chance he's in the 11th house of gains, Kamatrikona, fulfillment of desires, that is 11th house. So maybe there is some chance. But Venus Antar Dasa, is it, is it capable at all? If you look from Lagna, what house does Venus own? He wants the 6th house and 11th house. 6th house is not really getting married. He is not getting married. It is the house of Brahmacharya. It is the house of, or it is the house of being separated if you are married. So 6th house is not really conducive to marriage. And you can say that Venus is Karka for marriage, but that doesn't really, uh, that means everybody should get married in Venus Antidasa. Just on account of being Karka, he cannot give marriage. So, it does not make sense. So, most probably, this Lagna may be inaccurate. Or, there may be another Dasa that is working better than Chotri Dasa, which we may not know of right now. So, we'll do the same thing that we did in the last class to rectify. We looked at, what did we do last class? Kiti Pravesha. We looked at the annual chart. Because in annual chart, things come out more clearly. So let us open the annual chart. So he he got married in 1986. So let us look at 1986, chart, the annual lunar return chart. So if you see that chart, the data is September 10, 1986, 3.55.21 a.m. Second Rabat. So in, in that chart, let us look at Navamsha. Yeah, horror lord. He wants to see the horror lord, the ruler of the year. Who, ruler of the year is Mars. Okay. Now, if this Navamsa Lagna, Kepika Navamsa Lagna is correct, let us see when he got married. First, there has to be a chance of marriage, and then when he got married also should make sense. Right? Now, when did he get married? December, when did you say? December 8. So, Again, he got married in March. He got married in March Dacha, as per the Tithi Astrotri Dacha. So, March, the ruler of the year, he gave marriage. Okay? Now, if this is the Lagna, what houses does March own? He owns the 4th and 11th, 11th houses. And he is with the Lagna Lord and 8th Lord. And uh, let's see how much time is needed to change this. If the time was 11 minutes, 8 seconds earlier, or 3 minutes 20 seconds, 3, three minutes 27 seconds later, then the lagna will change. Okay? Now, is there a chance for Mars to give marriage? Is Mars capable of giving marriage? For me? I don't see Yeah. He is in the 10th house. Even though he is in Opad lagna in Navamsha, yeah, he is yeah, he's in Opad Lagna, but is that is that good enough indication for getting married? Just now Opad Lagna in Navamsa, is he, does he have any association with the 7th house or Lagna in Navamsa? Lagna and in, for me? Yes, it is Lagna. Yeah. Is there. Yeah. So he is associated with Lagna as well as 7th house. Okay, so good point. So, Mars is with Lagna Lord Saturn, right? But he is also with the 8th Lord Sun. And Mars and Saturn, are they really good friends? No. So, association of Mars with Saturn, the Lagna Lord, that's not really auspicious association. So, why will Mars give that result on behalf of Saturn? So, it's not really, it's not really making great sense. It's not making perfect sense. Let us say, we change the Lagna. So, I will change the Lagna. Let us say, it's not 34, but let's say it's 24. Let us see if Lagna comes to, no, it still did not come. So let us say, let us say 22, then it should come. Okay, I changed the time by around 12 minutes backwards. And when I did it, now see where is Navamsa Lagna. Now see where is Navamsa. Uh, the Lagna in Navamsa comes to Sagittarius. Now, if you, if you see this particular, 
if you see this particular uh, chart, would you say that, see, forget Marxists are giving marriage. Because even if Marx is not a perfect candidate, he may, give, he may still give marriage, being the horror lord, being the ruler of the year. If there is a strong indication of marriage in the year, a planet who is associated with Lagna or Seven can give the result or the ruler of the year can give the result. So forget that, forget the dasha. First of all, did it make sense that he got married in the year? If you look at this Lagna, Lagna lord was with some enemies and with the eighth lord. He is not very well placed Saturn. And the seventh lord moon is in the eighth house. Did you really see marriage in the year? No. no. Now, with this, do you see marriage in the year? Yes. yes. Why? Lagna Lord is also the Lord of the Seventh House. He's also the Lagna Lord is the Lord of Seventh House? What is Seventh Lord is Lagna. Ah. <laughs> Some Sagittarius Lagna, Seventh Lord, Nephi is in Lagna. Right. But who is he with? He is with the Sixth Lord. Isn't that a problem? No, that there is a Parvartana. Yes. There is a Parvartana. Did you notice that Jupiter and Venus have a Parvartana? Jupiter and Venus have a Parvartana. So, Venus here acts like? Jupiter. Jupiter. So, Lagna has Lagna Lord Jupiter and 7th Lord Venus. So, uh, this Lagna has, Venus acts like Jupiter here. So, he acts like Lagna Lord in Lagna and Mercury is 7th Lord in Lagna. So, if Lagna Lord and 7th Lord are joining, the 7th Lord represents wife or the partner. Lagna Lord represents the native himself or herself. So, if Lagna Lord and 7th Lord are together, it's auspicious. Especially if they are, they are conjoining in the 7th house or Lagna itself. It is very auspicious. It shows, it shows either having good relations, being very close or being brought close or just getting married, just starting the new marital life. It can show one of them. So, if you take this Lagna, this year has a very good chance of getting married, right? There is a very good chance that this person will get married this year. Uh, the Karaka for marriage is the Ascendant and it's with the 7th Lord and yeah. the Lord of the Lagna is actually acts the Upada, you know, from Jupiter, yeah, in his ass, Jupiter itself as Ketu who is the of marriage. Yeah. Yes, actually that is another good point. Uh, you, you can make any case, but the point is Jupiter acts as if he's, Venus acts as if he's, he's Jupiter. So we can make case otherwise, but that is, there is no point in making the case. But his point is, another point is good. If you look at Upada itself, Upada has to have certain strength to get the person married. And here, in the Rashi chart, Upada has Venus, the Karka of the marriage. And in Navamsa, the, the, because of, we said the Parivartana between Venus and Jupiter facilitated the marriage. That brought the result of Jupiter and Mercury being together in Lagna. And it helps that the planet involved in the Parivartana is Karka of the marriage, Venus. So it helps, that way your point is right. And that same Venus is an Opada in the Rashi chart. But that is not enough. That is not that is not alone. That is not the only point. There is another point. If you look at Opada excuse me, Opada in the Navamsa chart, who is there? Ketu. Ketu is the planet of again he is the secondary karka for marriage. Venus is the karka for marriage, Ketu is the karka for marriage, and Ketu especially shows getting married for <laughs> Ketu shows getting married for Vansya Vruddhi, for increasing the family, for increasing the lineage. If somebody gets married just because one has to get married and have children in order to increase the lineage, then Ketu is the karka for that kind of marriage. Especially if you are looking at an arranged marriage or traditional marriage or marriage with the support of elders, that kind of marriages. Ketu is probably more important than Venus. So here in the Navamsa, in the chart of Dharma, Ketu is there. In, in the chart of Rashi, physical existence, Venus is there. So it's not completely without love or without romance or without anything. Venus is there in Opada. But when it comes to Dharma, Ketu is there. So the dharmic sense of getting married is strictly for Manshavarati. So, uh, bottom line is Opada is blessed by both Venus and Ketu in Rashi and Navamsa chart and Lagna is blessed by Mercury and Venus and Jupiter. Actually, all the three planets involved are Subhagrahas. Not only good planets in this chart because Lagna Lord and Sanat Lord, but they are naturally, they are benefits. They are all natural benefits, they are good planets. So, there is a very good chance of getting married. Now, when it comes to timing of the marriage, it happened in? 
Right. It happened in December 8th. So it happened in March, Venus Antar Dasa. And Mars, he, like we said, Mars being the ruler of the year, he can, he can just give the marriage also. He's in the second from Upada. So there are other aspects that we haven't seen because of which we are not able to perfectly time the marriage. So we will, we will not go into that now. We will do it later, how to time. But Mars is certainly a candidate. You can expect it in Jupiter Dasa. You can expect it in Mercury Dasa. You can expect it in Mars Dasa because Mars is, after all, the ruler of the year. So, and here Mars ended up giving the result. But what you can say is, even though marriage actually happened in Mars Dasa, it is Mercury who is the seventh lord coming to Lagna. Seventh lord coming to Lagna means wife coming to you. Wife basically interacting with you. So that happens, that is, that is shown by Mercury. So even though marriage happened on December 8th, you can say that coming close to wife and interacting more and uh, building that relationship with the other person. That is basically between December 16 and February 10th. That is basically Mercury Dasa. So that is, that is what you can say. Timing of marriage is one thing. And actually wife and husband living together and the marital life basically building, that is another thing. That is more, more visible from the seventh house. Seventh house is the house of relationship, not marriage. Not the formal getting married. Formal getting married is from Upada. So when you look, at, look from Upada, somehow Mars has a bigger role to play. We'll see that later. But when you are timing marriage, remember that the seventh lord need not give the marriage. But unless the seventh lord is strong and taking part in yoga, marriage is not likely in that year. Marriage, the marriage ceremony is from Upada or other things. But that is not possible in a year unless there is a good chance of a person coming into your life and taking a significant part in your life. So, based on this, the time we have rectified so far is 2.22 and we know that the uncertainty cannot be, see here, if the time is 0 seconds later, it will change. If it is 14 minutes, 39 seconds earlier, it will change again. So, what this means is, the time we have, it cannot be after that time, but it can be back by a few minutes. 14 minutes seems too high because we already rectified by 10 minutes or 12 minutes. So maybe another few minutes of leeway we have to rectify it backwards further. Mm -hmm. Let us see some other events and then it will become clear. So let me save this so far and let me also save a comment. Original time. 14 or 15? Yeah. Original time. Oh, 34. Right. Okay. Now, let us go back to Vinchyotri Dasha. Now, with this Lagna, so when we rectify in the annual chart, the natal chart also got rectified. If you notice, the Lagna yeah. moved from Sagittarius to Scorpio. Scorpio. Now, is Scorpio a better candidate to see this person get married? I mean, sorry. Is Scorpio Lagna? Can you make better sense of the Vinchyotri Dasha? Which Dasha did we say? Does anybody remember without opening? K2 Venus, okay. right? K2 Dasha, Venus Antar Dasha, 86 December. So that is when he got married. Now, is there some chance for K2 to give marriage? Yeah. He is Lagna Lord. Yeah. Why no? He is Lagna Lord. Yeah, yeah but he is Lagna Lord. And he is, who is he with? The Lagna Lord is with? K2 is Lagna's co-lord. And he is with Moon. Who is Moon? Ninth, Ninth Lord. In Navamsa chart, if you see Lagna and Ninth House Lord conjoining, it's a nice yoga. Ninth House is your dharma. Lagna is your entire existence. So those two lords are conjoined. So that is that is auspicious. So it shows following dharma, etc. And especially being the Lagna Lord, he can give marriage. Now who is Venus? What houses does Venus own? He is the dispositor of this Raja Yoga, dispositor of this yoga, and he is the seventh lord. And he is exalted. So being the exalted seventh lord in Navamsa, is Venus qualified to give marriage in his Antardasa? Absolutely. Absolutely. So there is a there is a there is a good chance of getting married in Venus Venus Antardasa in Kesdasa. So based on the Dasha also it makes better sense than it did earlier when we rectified the time. So probably this time is right. And now let us see here how much leeway we have. If the time is 4 minutes 14 seconds earlier, sign will change. Or if the time is 9 minutes 21 se 20 seconds later, it will change. So, what if Lagna was not Libra, but it was, uh, sorry, Lagna was not Scorpio, but it was Libra. Then, 
would getting married in Ketu Venus make sense? Venus is in the sixth house. He is the Lagna Lord, but he is in Manakar Kasthana. So, not, not really a great chance. So, probably this time he is right. The only thing we can do is we can subtract up to 4 minutes, whatever seconds we found. It can't be more than that. The, uh, the Lagna is probably, the Lagna in the Navamsa chart is probably Scorpio. Now, before we see the other Dexterian etc., I just want to see one thing. Who is his Atmagarga? Let's apply the Shriyada etc. that we found. Who is his Atmagarka? Son. Oh, actually, there is there is another thing. Uh, I think I mentioned it in one of the previous classes. If you see, no, actually I didn't. If you see Atmagarka, how do you see Ishtadevata? What is Moksha? Swalsham Atmagarka is giving up of the identity of the soul. So, whoever planet is there in that sign, you should basically worship that person to get Moksha. And you should... Or, if there is no planet there, you should worship the God shown by the Lord of that sign. So, that is Ishtadevata, I said. Now, there is another additional principle that you should remember. If there is no planet in that sign, but if there is Lagna, such a person will be very saintly. But, of course, I, I have some example charts where the person is not really a saint or something. But, usually, those people are spiritual. If you see, if you see Lagna in the twelfth from Atmakarka, that means, Atmakarka 12th is what the soul is willing to give up. How soul is willing to give up. So, your entire personality, Lagna is your character, your personality, your existence. That is in the sign. So, that means your Atma is willing to basically give up your, your entire existence. So, that is the nature, that is basically the quality of a, of a self-realized person or a saint. So, if just because of that, he doesn't have to be a saint, but there will be some, some level of spirituality some reasonably high level of spirituality in those people. So, if you see Atmakarka and Lagna, irrespective of all other combinations, you can conclude that this person will be spiritual and dharmic and there will be some detachment basically, some inherent detachment at the level of soul. Pardon me? Only in Navamsa. Only in Navamsa. Because that is the dharma. Navamsa Atmakarka shows the sense of dharma of your soul. Now, if you want to recommend a god to worship to get moksha, what will you recommend? It is, uh, should be a martyr in form. Yes, should, uh, should be mass or ketu? Ketu. 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 Both are Probably mass is strong. Okay. Okay, now remember another thing. The twelfth from Atmagarka shows moksha and the lord, the, that lord will show Ishta Devata, but there is also another god called Dharma Devata. Dharma Devata is from the ninth from Atma Karaka. That is the Dharma to be discharged by the Atma. So if you look at the ninth from Atma, do the same thing. Ninth from Atma Karaka. If it is occupied, look at the planet, the stronger planet. If it is unoccupied, then look at the Lord. So here, there is a link between the two. One of the Lords of the twelve is going into the ninth from Atma Karaka. Mars. So I would rather more than Ketu. Ketu can show Ganesha. So, K2 is also possible, but more than K2, I will suggest Mars. Now, which kind of God? Mars can show Subrahmanya, Kartkeya, he can show Hanuman, he can show Narsimha. There are so many, so many forms that you can suggest for Mars. Which God will you suggest here? Look at the influences on Mars. Conjoined with Mercury. See, conjoined with Mercury. So, Mercury shows Vishnu. So, because the mass is conjoined with Mercury, which form will you? Narsimha. So, if he worships Lord Narsimha, Narsimha, that is, that is, that will basically make his soul discharge the duties that it has and also get more detachment from the worldly things. So, from the point of view of Moksha, praying to Narsimha Deva is very auspicious for you. If you take Ketu, who is the God? <laughs> Ketu will show Ganesha. It can also show, because Ketu is with moon, it can also show mother. Moon can show Vishnu, but he can also show mother. Especially in a sign of Venus, Venus or moon, when he is in a sign worn by moon or Venus, moon can show Parvati. Moon also shows Gauri and Parvati. So, he is with Ketu. So, that, that influence can dominate. 
so you do a lalita worship right so that is also that is also very auspicious lalita worship will activate this moon who is influencing ketu that was lord from the atmakarka so that can also take him in the path of moksha but if you trace to narasimha it will also there are some unfulfilled duties of the soul so in fulfilling those duties narasimha will help you so in order to get moksha both of them are good candidates narasimha and lalita but i just want to enforce reinforce one important point it is not that if you pray to some other god like hanuman let us say or rama or shiva it's not that those are bad or those are inefficient or ineffective he will be led to if he if he is praying to one god when the right time comes he will be led to another god somebody will come and advise him he will meet a guru who will tell him who will give him a nice mantra then after that mantra reaches certification time some other guru will come and give a, give another mantra and all this doesn't have to happen in one life it can happen over life but bottom line is whatever you do it's a stepping stone as long as you are doing sadhikally if you don't have any tamasic desires like i'm doing this puja because i want to become president of india or i want to get billion dollars if you have any tamasic if you have any desire then whatever worship you do can harm you but if you are doing sadhik with a sadhik attitude with a sense of submission no worship of any god or even the god within you no sadhik worship will ever harm you it will only take you in the right direction but if you look at the chart and if you suggest the right god basically you will put them you will accelerate their progress so that is all you can do as an astrologer but if you are already praying to another god don't think that that is bad now let us go back to the uh, the non, the normal material charts the moksha etc is over now let us go to dashamsha with the time that we have required so far the dashamsha lagna has it will change if the time is changed 10 minute to 40 seconds later which which is ruled out we are not going to do that based on what we have seen so far but the lagna can change back to the previous time if time is changed by 1 and 1/2 minutes so you can see that kind of here 24 degree 22 minutes means it's very soon after 24 degree so if you back it up a little bit it will cross 24 degrees and go to 23 59 and at every 3 degree multiples the sam lagna will change so you kind of know that when you look at the degrees so now should we do that should we change that birth time by 1 minute 30 seconds backwards and take this dasham lagna from leo to cancer or is leo sufficient so now based on the rectification we have done so far we have two candidates we don't have 10 candidates we have we have only two candidates leo or cancer and based on his career and based on events in his career let's pick one of them so that is the next step okay is everybody with me so far if you do systematically it's, it's very easy but the only pitfall is with vinchotri dasha you cannot always get a perfect reasoning it's not that the perfect candidates dasha and the perfect candidates under dasha will give you the result so it is not sufficient if you will just look at the vinchotri dasha and try to tie me you may sometimes make mistake you may say oh he got married this year so his, his time would have been 10 minutes back oh he got job this year so his time would have been forward by 10 minutes he will go back and forth and keep keep going in a, in circles so what you should do is not only use vimshotri dasha but like i did use the tithi pravesha chart even if tithi astrotri dasha is not perfect if somebody got married there will be a strong indication in navamsha of that year if somebody got a job there will there will be a strong indication in the dashamsha chart of that year so if you pay a lot of importance if you give lot of importance to tithi astrotri sorry tithi pravesha chart the annual chart you cannot go wrong and then reconcile with the vinchotri dasha in the case of vinchotri sometimes you have to reconcile a little bit but in the case of annual charts it's very little the reconciliation reconciliation needed is very minimal so if you reconcile using lot of factors you can confidently rectify so go through it systematically then it becomes easy and pick the right chart based on what events he gives you and now we want to rectify the dashamsha because we want to analyze his dashamsha now do you have any event okay. first tell us what kind of career you have what kind of career you have what is your job or what are the kind of jobs that you have done in the past job is always been engineering okay he is an engineer point number 1 okay no. what kind of engineering no. r and d <coughs> engineering r and d okay okay so what kind of what kind of r and d what what kind of field did you work in so embedded software 
software or did you do some hardware also? Hardware and then software. Hardware and then software. What kind of hardware did you do? Designing software board. Okay. He did some hardware like designing software board and then you write some device drivers etc. for those boards. Right. Okay. Okay. So he did some embedded software like device drivers etc. Okay. <coughs> Okay. Now, if this if this lagna is accurate, if this lagna is doing that, this lagna is accurate. What is the kind of query that the person will have? Do you want to check that, or do you want to check the application like when did it, when did I come to USA and then? We'll do that also. Okay. We'll do that also. Come to US may not really matter that much, but. When you st uh, any important events in your career, like when you started your career, when you changed the job, when you got a promotion, if you have any such things, they will help. Started, uh, started, started the first job in December 11, December 11, 1980. Okay. okay. And then any other couple of events in the in career. In, um, Child, let us not go, because that is Satamsa, that recognition is different. See, when you look at different divisional charts, the time when the lagna changes is different in different divisional charts. So, you may be very confident that his Satamsa lagna is accurate, but you, know, you may not be confident that his Dashamsa lagna is accurate. So, you may be making perfect predictions about his children, but you may be going wrong in his career. Or you may be very good in predicting his marital life, but you may be bad in predicting his career. So that is the problem with all these divisional charts, etc. So when you are you when you are using a particular divisional chart to make predictions, you should be confident that lagna is accurate in that chart. So let us stick to the career. Any other events in career? When did did you get any any time any growth in career or any period that was important? Yeah, sometime in January 1985. January 1985. Okay, so let's look at December 80 and January 85. Okay. What December 80? 85. December 80? No, started in December 80, you said. First year. 80. 80, yeah. So December 80. So he started career in Mercury Rahu and the Dasha. Mercury Dasha, Rahu and the Dasha, he started his career. Is that possible? Is that possible? <laughs> Mercury is the? Second house. It's large in second house, you said. Yeah. Saturn. You are talking about Saturn. Okay. Yeah. Six thousand six lakh Saturn. Six lakh six lakh Saturn is in the second house. Okay. Resources. But that is the resources. So the resources he has are Saturnite. Basically, hard work is his resource. If that is right. Also, Venus is in the tenth lord. It's conjoined with Mercury. Uh huh. That's good point. So the tenth lord Venus is conjoined with Mercury. Second lord in fourth house. Second lord in. Fifth house, fifth house. Yeah, second lord is in the fifth house. Yeah, so basically, Venus and Mercury own two Artha Trikonas. Tenth house of karma and second house of resources. So those two lords are joining in the fifth house of recognition. So during that time, his, his, uh, his, uh, he, can, he can basically get recognition. So getting your first job is basically your first recognition, first recognition of your ability. So that is... There is some possibility. Now, why did Rahu the Rahu Dasha started career? Rahu Santa Dasha started career? For me? Rahu is in Lagna. Rahu is in Lagna. And Lagna is basically a new beginning, a fresh beginning. Lagna is beginning in that area of life. So, Rahu being in Lagna, he can give a beginning in career. Okay? So, there is there is some some sense. It does make sense. Now, let us see. The time, Kiti Pravesh will see a little later, but let us see the time when he got, when he got a boost in his career, when he thought 
he had a good time, January 1995. Yes? Uh, I thought that there, is, there, are, there should be some relation to the six years, right? It's six years time for serving. Yeah. And if he started his career in uh, affairs, yeah. Like my very first job, then yeah. there should be some relation to the six house also, right? When you are looking at when you six house is service, but basically six house is the house of overcoming obstacles. So in his first job, was he working hard and overcoming a lot of obstacles? Well, getting through the interview process, six house will be downstairs. But you do not see interview from the sixth house. Okay. Six house is as a part of your karma, your career. Whatever hard work that you do, whatever troubles you overcome is from the sixth house. The process of interview is basically most more from 6th house and 9th house. 9th house is the 3rd and 9th house is actually show interview and offer. Basically you are communicating. 3rd house is the house of initiative and 9th house is the house of from the if you take the 3rd house, 9th house happens to be the 7th from 3rd, the mark of from 3rd. So 3rd house is initiative, you, you have an initiative so you go to an interview and also 3rd house also shows communication. So interview is basically an interaction, a communication. And it is a it is an indication of your initiative. But once you have an offer, that is basically the end of your initiative. That is the goal, that is also the desire of your initiative. Third house is your initiative. The seventh from there is the desire. Seventh is desire, right? Desire of your initiative is offer. So ninth house actually shows the offer. So when you look at if you look at the ninth house in the Samsa, that shows any offers that you get. So if you get offer at the time, the ninth house should be active. So, yes? Yes, yes, actually A9, yes, absolutely. So, uh, and then, the fifth house is the recognition. Fifth house is the following that you have, the recognition of your abilities, etc., right? That's what we said earlier. So, when you get, when you get a job offer, it's basically a recognition. Somebody likes your resume. Somebody like, like something about you. So it is a recognition. So just like a film fair, an actor getting a film fair award or Oscar award, a software engineer getting a job offer, it's basically analogous to that. So we saw all those awards not from fixed house. Even though you have to overcome lot of obstacles to get them, we saw that final recognition in the fifth house. So similarly you see getting a job offer from fifth house and ninth house. The recognition from the fifth house and the offer from the ninth house. <coughs> Yeah, A5 is in Lagna. So Rahu is in A5. So he shows recognition in the career. And now, actually more, more than when he started job, even before he started job, he may be doing some work. Before he started his job, maybe he was, uh, if not him, somebody else, when, we, when you see somebody else's chart, even before I started my job, I may have gone to a local temple and taken part in the, in the functions that they organize at the temple. That is my karma. So karma doesn't necessarily mean a job. So somebody may be already doing a lot of karma, overcoming obstacles, etc. So when you are talking about formal job, give more importance to Arudha. Just like you said A9, not 9th house. Arudha is the tangible thing. So the fact that he had a job, he was, he was an engineer at a particular company, that is seen from the Arudha. So if you look from Arudha Lagna, if this, is, this Lagna is accurate, this is the Arudha Lagna and Mercury is in Mercury is having a Suhargada and Arudha Lagna, especially Mercury in the second house is good. So, what are the resources? What are his resources in people's views? Mercury and Venus. Earlier when, when we talked about Saturn, we said resources. Second house shows the resources. From Lagna, Saturn is second house. So, when it comes to his karma in the society, his main real resource is Saturn and Virgo. Virgo is analytical ability and Saturn is discipline. Discipline and hard work and ability to go through suffering. That is his real resource. But as far as the world sees, world sees Mercury and Venus as his resource. Venus is basically the, the passion of doing something and Mercury is intelligence, intelligence, analytical ability, etc. So people think of him as, a, as an intelligent person, a very resourceful person, very smart person. And they think that that, that smartness he can use as a resource in the work that he does. And of course, Saturn also has an influence. Saturn has a Rashi Drishti. So people also, not only is he hardworking, not only is discipline one of his virtues, but people know it. Had that Saturn, had he not had any influence on the second from Arudha Lagna, then 
that is his resource, but people don't know about it. But here people also know about it because Saturn has a has a Rashi Drishti. Yes, actually Venus and Saturn both joining is stronger than just Saturn. Saturn only shows ability to go through suffering and ability to work hard and discipline. But that doesn't mean somebody who is passionately doing a lot of things. Venus brings the passion. When Venus and Saturn get together, you have the passion, you have the rajas. Venus is rajas, energy. So Venus brings that energy and passion and Saturn brings that uh, that cold-heartedness, just ability to go through it without any emotion, unemotionally. So when both of them are together, you have Venus to push you there and Saturn to keep you going. So that is that is really, that becomes even more powerful. So that is a good point. Venus and Saturn, they kind of give tapasvi yoga. It's not full because Ketu is not involved. So it's not complete but there is kind of tapasvi yoga. So you can keep working hard with passion. And people recognize it. That is the important thing. And even from Lagna, not only Saturn here but Venus and Mercury are aspecting it and having Argada. So there is there is a correlation between the second from Lagna and second from Arur Lagna. So when it comes to his resources, what the reality is and what people think has a close correlation in his particular case. Now, had Lagna been here, Cancer, where would Arur Lagna be? Here, right? UL is the 12th house Arudha. So the 12th house right now would be Lagna. So this UL would change to AL if we move the Lagna from Leo to Cancer. So Arur Lagna would, would be in Libra. If Arur Lagna is in Libra, Mercury and Venus, are they well placed? Yeah. In the third house. Benefits in the third house are not really that well placed from Arur Lagna. So it's a period of losses. It's a period of not having enough initiative. So it's not really a good candidate for giving career. It's, it's, not, it's a candidate for basically taking it easy, taking it not really having any drive, strong drive from anything. So, so most probably because Mercury has started his career, most probably this Lagna is accurate. And now what is the nature of his karma? Now, let us look at, uh, let us look at first Lagna. Lagna is his basic nature, his basic identity. Where is Lagna? It is in Brahmamsa. What, what does Brahma show? Keep digging, keep digging, keep digging. We say, and find things, find out things. So that is his real nature. When he is not sure about something, let's just figure it out. That is the nature. That is his real nature. And making that indication stronger, who is in Lagna? Rahu. Rahu. The nature of Rahu is? Again, big, 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 fine. Let's, let's explore, let's find. So Rahu in Lagna, and Lagna being in Brahmamsa shows, those two factors show, what do they show? R&D. Yeah, he, he has that R&D mentality. He may or may not be in R&D, but he has the R&D mentality. His, his attitude in career is that of keep digging, keep digging, let's find out. That is the, that is the nature given by Rahu and Lagna and Brahmansa. And now, let us look at 10th house. Is the 10th house stronger or 10th large stronger? 10th house has, has only sun. Tenth Lord Venus is with Second Lord Mercury, and both of them are aspecting the Second House and Sixth Lord. So basically, this Venus, Mercury, and Saturn, who are aspecting each other by Rashi Drishti, they are the Second Lord, Sixth Lord, and Tenth Lord. All the three Arthur Trikona Lords. So because the three Arthur Trikona Lords are either together in Sagittarius or in Virgo and aspecting each other, these two signs play a crucial role in the career: Sagittarius and Virgo. But we will come to that career later. Let us just look at sun here. There is sun in the 10th house. So what does this show? Who is sun? What house does he own? Sun wants? Lagna. Lagna Lord is basically you. And if that Lagna Lord is going into the 10th house, that means you going into your Karmasthana. So that means such a person would be very actively involved in the karma he does. He, is, he does some active karma. On the other hand, remember this, if the Lagna Lord goes into the ninth house, what is ninth house? It is the house of your boss, dharma, and also it is the house of your boss. Your boss tells you your dharma. Your boss defines your dharma. Just because you can do such a thing, just because I can make a, I can write some software, 
that's not my dharma. Just because I am good at writing a particular software, if I do, if I write that particular software, that is not my dharma. In Navamsa, the ninth house is my ability. Based on my ability, I, I said earlier that based on my ability, my dharma is decided, right? So I said that the ninth house in Navamsa shows my ability and also my dharma. That is overall dharma. But when it comes to my career, my karma in society, my dharma is not defined by my ability. It is defined by my boss. My boss tells me to do write a particular piece of software, I do it. If he doesn't tell me to do that, if he tells me to do something else, I should I should do that. I should not do what I am good at, but I should do what my boss tells me to do. Is that right? Does everybody agree? So, when you are talking about dharma, in, Dash, in Navamsa the definition is different. In Dashamsa, the definition is different. So, in Navamsa, ninth house doesn't show any boss. It shows your abilities and your dharma. In Dashamsa, it shows your boss and hence your dharma. So, if Lagna Lord in Dachamsa is in the ninth house, that shows the person actively involved in his dharma. That means he defines his own dharma. He, he is basically his energy. Lagna Lord is basically your own, your whole energy. The energy of your entire existence as far as your career is concerned. So, if Lagna Lord is in the ninth house, you focus your energies on your dharma. That means you like to think about your dharma. You like to define your dharma. So, you become your own boss. Those kind of people are very strong-willed and very independent. They have a fierce, a fierce sense of independence. If you see somebody who has Lagna Lord in the ninth house, either in Rashi chart or preferably in the Dasyamsa chart, they don't like being bossed. They hate bosses. They hate people defining their dharma. They like to define their own dharma. So, the so similarly, so remember that, that, that thing. If you see somebody who works for you, who has that combination, be very careful. Don't be bossy with him because he'll be very upset. He wants to be his own boss. But anyway, here the Lagna Lord is not going into the ninth house, but he, but he's going into tenth house. So the focus, the focus of his whole thinking or his uh, the, uh, his very existence, the whole focus of his entire existence as far as karma is concerned, is on karma. So that means sun, sun, even though he's alone, even though other planets are, may define his active career. Sun will definitely show some other line <coughs> where he is very active, where his entire energy is focused. And what kind of, what is the direction that Sun is showing? Sun is showing Ananta. Sun is showing Ananta Amsa. First of all, Sun shows management. Sun shows administration. Sun basically shows politicians and kings, etc. So there is some line of work that he is engaged in where he puts all his energy and that is likely to be in the direction of Ananta, not in politics. Had Sun been in Indramsa, he would be involved in some politics. He would be running for the president of TAGB or some, he would be doing some, he would be engaged in some politics. But here Sun is in Ananta Amsa. What does Ananta show? Spiritual upliftment, spiritual rise. So, so from this you can say that he is engaged in some administrative work relating to spiritual. spiritual activities. So, if you are planning a spiritual organization or if you are planning something spiritual and if you want somebody to take care of things for you, to be a, be an administrator, do all the administrative stuff for you, he is a very good candidate, there is none of son. So, uh, luckily we found him. I didn't see his chart actually before, hmm. before I asked him to take care of all his website, uploading things, recording things, etc. But he, he, he is very good at that when you see the chart. So that is that is what sun shows, but that is that is not necessarily his entire career. That is one karma, like we saw in his chart earlier in Vijay's chart, that the tenth lord dominated and he showed a software, hardware, analytical kind of career, a mathematical, analytical, logical kind of career. But I think it was Jupiter, right? Yeah. Jupiter was in the Amsha, Ishan Amsha or something like that, right? right. Jupiter was in Ishan Amsha, so he was into some kind of teaching. Sun is politics or administration. Similarly, Jupiter is teaching. So, he has a parallel line of activity where he teaches yoga and other things. He teaches, he teaches kids. And similarly, he has a parallel, some, some other line of work is solar and ananta, ananta line of work. But the actual line of work is, the actual career is given by the stronger 10th lord rather than the 10th house. So, that is Sagittarius <coughs> and that is Venus and Mercury. So, what kind of career do those guys show? 
Who is more important? Who is who dominates there? Venus or Mercury? Why did you say that? Because you know he's a software engineer, or is there another reason? I'm not ridiculing. I just want to understand. Is there another reason? Who said Mercury? Actually, not you. I heard wrong. Sorry. You said Mercury. Why? Yeah, but but Venus is the tenth lord. Mercury is the second lord. Both of them are together. Yes, very good point. Venus is in an enemy sign, and Mercury is in a neutral sign. So Mercury is actually better placed in Sagittarius than Venus. So that is one point. And the second point is, look at the Saturn. <coughs> Excuse me. Look at Saturn. Saturn is the sixth lord. The sixth lord Saturn is in the second house, and Mercury is his dispositor. and both are affecting each other by rashi drishti so mercury is not only associated with the second house but with the sixth house also because he is giving uh, he is giving his house to the sixth lord to stay stay in so he has influence over second house and sixth house and he is joining the temple so is venus likely to dominate or mercury based on both the factors that we have seen so far <coughs> mercury will dominate now What is the focus? What is the direction? Who is the god who is controlling Mercury's direction? Yama. Yama. What does Yama show? Discipline. Discipline and just doing beautifully. Like I said in the last class, somebody said when I said what does Yama stand for, somebody said death and destruction. I said in the last class that is Rudra's job. Yama is not. Yama is basically not the killer. When you look at Yama, we think of him as as a killer, but he is not a killer. He is just the upholder of dharma. So I said that any planet in Yamamsa will show basically cold-heartedly and unemotionally just going through motions and doing your duty sincerely. He shows sincere duty mindedness. So the 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 work that he does is Mercurian, basically logical and analytical. And how does he do it? He does it with a sense of duty. And like I said, Yamamsa planets in Yamamsa are also good for lot of testing, lot of rigorous testing. So these kind of people not only they are good at writing software, but they are writing, they are coming up with some test ways, how to test, strategies to test something, strategies to find bugs, and then they are, they are very, they have a natural ability to come up with the testing strategies. For but but again, that can be depending on the planet it changes because it's Mercury. It is. I said testing strategy. Had it been some other planet, it would have been different. Had it been Mars in Yamamsa, it would have been a police officer who specializes in encounters. <laughs> But basically, who basically does his duty without, with a with a cold heart, without any emotion. So, so so based on the nature of the planet, you see what the Yamamsa or what the Indramsa signifies. But here, Mercury being in Yamamsa shows. A, a detached and a very sincere analytical person who can use his analytical abilities very coldly without any emotion if you see somebody in the same chart had that mercury been in indramsha the focus of that analytical ability is getting power so such a person if he comes up with a design if you go and tell him oh i think there is a flaw in the design if this happens then this will happen then this will not work Then the person will get offended. If you see the same Mercury in Indramsa, I know so I know a few people who get very offended, who are very possessive about their design, who can, who cannot stand criticism. But here Mercury being in Yamamsa shows that the person's intelligence, analytical ability, he is basically is very comfortable with criticism. If you criticize his design, he can easily take it, as well as he can come up with good, good criticism of other design. So he is a very good candidate for. getting your design verified if you want to if you have a design software design and if you want to verify it he is a very good candidate for getting it verified that is what mercury in yamamsa stands for so now let us see how the career he is now actually we didn't look at kishi pravesha so let us see when he started his career that was 1980 right yeah 80 the december okay december 11 <coughs> Okay, nineteen eighty December eleven. Saturn yeah. Who is the ruler of the year? Saturn. The ruler of the year is Saturn. Saturn. Okay. Okay, is Saturn well placed in the Dasham chart? Yes. 
What is great about Saturn in this chart? Can somebody tell me? Yogakarka. He is Yogakarka. For Libra Lagna, for Libra Lagna, Saturn is the fourth lord, a Kendra lord, a quadrant lord, and fifth lord, a Kona lord, a trine lord. So being a Kendra and Kona lord, he is a Yogakarka. And if he plays in a bad house, is the Yogakarka plays in a bad house? He plays in the ninth house of fortune, dharma, and like I said, offers, etc. That is also ninth house signification. And now, also, which Arudha is he in? He is in Arudhagna. So, he shows a beginning of status. Being a Yogaraka placed in Arudhagna, he shows some kind of beginning in the status. So, it's overall, it's a good year for career. The career can definitely have started. So, let us see the, the year that got over just now. 2003. <coughs> so the year 2003 it, start, it started in September 2 ok who is the roller of the year who is the roller of the year for all yeah. Venus is the roller of the year now let us look at the Shamsa for me uh, ok we will we'll come to that we will come to that but how is how is the current how is the how is the how is the current year start and how was the last couple of months so venus then we can be and, and before we do that let us look at this lagna is it is the lagna how close is lagna to the border so if it is 3 minutes 2 seconds earlier it would change so let us see if this lagna makes sense based on the events of this year so what would you expect based on venus dasha venus uh, the dasha of venus Venus is the 6th and 11th lot. What does 6th house show? Service. is okay, but it is service. It is basically, 6th house is the house of service. And what did I say in a previous class about 3rd house and 8th house? In the initiative, okay, but in, in the in, in the Samsha, I specifically said 3rd house and 8th house stand for certain things. Does anybody remember? In the previous class or the class before that? Eighth house is the house of long leave and third house is the house of short, short break, short leave. So if you, if you see in your Dashamsa, if you see a planet, especially a planet associated with the sixth house or tenth house, placed in the third or eighth house, that is not so good. That, the, the, that planet shows some kind of, some kind of uh, break in the case. Some kind, third house is a short break and eighth house is a long break. So here, Venus Dasha that, that has been running for the last few years, uh, last few months is not a good Dasha. But let us look at the next year. Yeah, if, if the person, if there is a short break, that means a person can uh, temporarily lose a job or he can go on leave for a couple of months somewhere. So all those things are possible. Basically, he was not doing as far as his service is concerned, he was on leave during that time. He was not doing much. So that is what it shows. Now let us look at the, oh, the, the new year already started. One second, one second. Is there an Adhikamasa issue? Okay, this is the right chart. Okay, software done make a mistake. So the new year, the new lunar year started on August 22nd at 5.23.15 a.m. So who is the roller of this year? Mars. Mars. Mars is the roller of this year. And let us see how this year will be, okay? Now first let us look at the Rashi chart. How is Mars? What houses does he own? Let us see what is the focus for the coming year. What houses does Mars own? He owns the fifth house, Scorpio, and the tenth house, Aries. Is he a good planet or a bad planet? Very good. Very good planet. Why very good? Yogacarka again. He owns a quadrant as well as a trine. So Mars is Yogacarka. So the ruler of the year happens to be a Yogacarka. Now, he is a Yogacarka, all right, but is he taking part in any yoga? Let us see that. Jupiter, there are four planets here, Jupiter, Sun, Mercury and Mars. 
Jupiter is at 28 degree in Leo, Mercury is at 8 degree, Sun is at 5 degrees, Mars is at 13 degree. So Mars has a close conjunction with Mercury and a reasonably close conjunction with Sun. So, uh, but but there is no special Rajyoga. There is no, Mars is a quadrant and trine lord, but neither Mercury nor Sun wants a quadrant or trine. I am trying to see if the Hora lord is taking part in a Rajyoga. But there is a Rajyoga with Jupiter. Jupiter and Mars, AK and PK, not only that, but the 9th lord and the 10th lord. So 9th lord and 10th lord are conjoining, AK and PK are conjoining, but that conjunction is happening very, not very closely, but far apart. Mars is at 13 degrees and Jupiter is at 28 degrees. There is a big difference between them. So what this means is this Rajyoga given by Mars and Jupiter will take time to fructify during the year. It will not happen right away. But because at least Jupiter is more advanced than Mars, it's not other way around. If Jupiter was here and Mars was more advanced, Mars would just go further away from him. On the other hand, Jupiter is at 28 degrees and Mars is at 13 degrees. So Mars is trying to approach Jupiter. So when, when the slower moving planet is ahead and a faster moving planet is behind, okay. later he will catch up. So what that means is during the year this will fructify. But it will fructify after some time. It will not fructify immediately. It will fructify a few months later. So that is, that is what you can see. And let us look at the Dashamsa chart. How much uncertainty we have in Dashamsa chart? 8 minutes and 4 minutes. And based on all the rectification we have done, we are basically through within a, couple, within a minute or so now. Based on, because things made sense not only based on natal chart, but the things that we know made sense based on annual charts also. So if we strictly kept all those plus or minus times with us, we would, we would know the exact window, window of certainty. We don't, unfortunately we did not do that, but we know that it's a couple of minutes, not more than that. So we know that this is accurate. So let us use this Dasansha confidently. And let us see what Mars shows during this year. Now, is Mars placed well, he is a Yokarka and Rashi, but in Dasyamsa is he well placed? Is he a good planet first of all? Is Mars a good planet? He is the Lagna Lord. Lagna Lord is always a good planet. He is probably the most auspicious planet. So being the Lagna Lord, Mars is an auspicious planet. Who is he with? The seventh lot. But there is a parivartana. There is a parivartana between Venus and Jupiter. So basically Venus acts as if he is Jupiter here. So the Lagna lot Mars and the second lot Jupiter. And Jupiter happens to be fifth lot also. So second and fifth lot Jupiter is joining Lagna lot Mars in the second house of resources. Second house of wealth, resources, food, etc. So because of that, overall do you think that this year will be a good year? For career, yes. For career, this is a good year. This is a year of maybe a new beginning. Why? Because Mars. Mars is Lagna Lord. Lagna always shows a beginning. Lagna always shows a new beginning. So it is a new beginning or basically reinforcement. Lagna is always going back to the basics. Lagna is the root of your existence. It is the source from which everything else comes comes from. So. When Lagna Lord happens to be the ruler of the year, that year is a year of new beginning or a fresh reinforcement. I should... Do you want me to do it? Just press it. Okay. Let us restart. So, so overall we know that this year will be a good year. How will be... How will be Mars Dasa? Do you think that will be a good dasa? Is Mars dasa a good dasa? Yes, he is the roller of the year. Mars being the roller of the year, Mars dasa has to be a very important dasa during the year. Whatever is promised in the year, if other planets haven't already given it, Mars can certainly give it, being the roller of the year. That too being, the, being a very strong roller of the year. What is the promise? Pardon me? Is it say it's only in only a new beginning or what, are the, what is the promise that's been uh, that life in store for him over the next one year? Okay. Let us not go into that detail. It may be new beginning or it may be reinforcing or something that is already there. 
that is not going to the detail, but definitely something auspicious will be given by Mars. For me? Yes, actually you missed a few classes. When you make Tithi Pravesha chart by typing the year here and say find Tithi Pravesha chart, you find the chart that is applicable just for that year. And you judge it just as natal chart. The only difference is this is applicable only to that year. What happens in that year, it, it puts a lot of fox on that. And then, if you look at this window, there is a horror alert. This horror alert mass, he is the roller of the year. Whoever is horror alert, he becomes the roller of the year. And that planet is like the king of that year. He takes control over your life. So that planet, look at that planet, what houses he wants, what house he occupies. So based on it, you can see main events of the year. And then there is a, if you click on Tithi Astrothri Dasha button here, in this Tithi Pravesha window, you get this Dasha, Tithi Astrothri Dasha. This is the Dasha to be used with Tithi Pravesha charts. So if you want to see what will happen during this particular year, you use this particular Dasha. So for example, if you see Venus Dasha, what is likely in Venus Dasha? Well, actually Venus Dasha was for a short duration. Uh, as soon as, why, when the year started, it started with Venus Dasha. The year started on August 22nd, right? So Venus Dasha is, I mean, it's basically a two days Dasha. So let's ignore it. Sun Dasha. What will Sun Dasha show? First in the Rathi chart. In the Rathi chart, Sun is? He is the second lord. He is the second lord in second house. So he shows, second house is the house of family. House of family, house of money, etc. So taking care of some financial transactions, some financial things, that is what son can give. And then he can also give spending time with the family. And in terms of career, he is the 11th lord, so he can give some gains in the career. Right? So, and let us say Navamsa. If you look at Navamsa, uh, son is the 5th lord, 7th lord in the 4th house. So basically he is well fourth, fourth house is the house of Sukha and seventh house is the house of partners. So basically uh, happiness, happiness, being with the wife. But you don't see anything special. If you see anything special, then you can make a prediction. Let us see Saptamsa. If you see Saptamsa, how many children do you have? Only one? Two children. Okay. Tejasvi is either the first child or second child. Tejasvi is your first head. Okay. So if you see Scar uh, Saptamsa, in a previous class, I told you that you can look at individual children in each in annual chart, right? So let us see that. So Lagna is is it a even is it an event sign or odd sign? Yeah. Event sign. So should you count backwards or forward? Backwards. backwards. Because it's an event sign. So if you count backwards and go to fifth house, that shows the first head. And second head will be third from that. Yeah. So let us see Pisces. Let us take Pisces. So taking Pisces as Lagna, if you see how, if you look at this particular particular chart, you can see what will happen during this year. What is the main event of this year for the for the first head? So first, to see any child, the most important things are you should take the lot of the sign, not Pisces as Lagna, but lot as the Lagna. So Pisces lot Jupiter. So take this as the Lagna, Jupiter Jupiter in Aquarius as Lagna, and analyze the whole chart. Okay, so which house really stands out when you look at when you look at Aquarius as Lagna? Which house is really standing out? Eleventh house. house with Seni and Ketu and also the uh, ninth, ninth house. Those two houses are really standing out in this particular chart, right? Now, uh, what do you mean by standing? standing out means there is a either a, an important yoga or lot of planets there. So when you see it, your eyes fall on that. You can look at every house, every planet and get them. But if you want to give a quick reading, you should look at what your eyes fall on. So if you look at first, Jupiter is in Lagna. What does it show? He becomes uh, Jupiterian path. He becomes Satvik. He becomes Jupiter-like. Uh, interest in Jupiter-like subjects. That is what Jupiter in Lagna would show. And then, Saturn is the Lagna lot. He is with Ketu and affecting Lagna. Yes, Saturn. So Saturn and Ketu, again, just like Saturn, Venus, I said, Saturn and Ketu is also a combination for Tapas Yoga. Saturn, Venus and Ketu is perfect combination because Ketu gives detachment. 
and Saturn gives hard work. So Ketu and Saturn being together may, makes the person a detached, detached and disciplined person. Detached. No. You take the lord of that sign. That has the lagna. That is the way to use Saptansha and Drekkana. So from from here, the Lavasthana has lagna lord. Lagna lord, Saturn is in Lavasthana aspecting lagna. So there is a strong influence of Seni on lagna. Because he is the lord and he is aspecting it and causing Argala. And that Seni is with Ketu. And Ketu is exalted. Sagittarius is a sign of exaltation for Ketu. So during that year, the sun will become like a tapasvi or sun will become spiritual. Saturn and Ketu combination will show a spiritual, uh, sun becomes a very spiritual person and uh, spirituality becomes a very important part of his life during the year. Not that he wasn't spiritual earlier, but if the person was already spiritual, this will be a very important year for him. And then the, the ninth house stands out. Pardon me? Yes, six Lord in the twelfth house. That is that is a Vipet Raj Yoga. So that shows twelfth house is displacement, sixth house is overcoming obstacles. So overcoming obstacles at a far away place. There are so many interpretations that you can give. But I want to I want to leave that. I want to focus on what really stands out the other thing. Look at Venus and Mercury here. Venus is the ninth lord and Mercury is the fifth lord. I said earlier, fifth and ninth lord conjunction is Another Raj Yoga, it's a Maharaj Yoga, fifth and ninth lord conjunction. But that yoga is happening in the ninth house of Dharma. So basically this year is a very important year for the Dharma of the person, for following the Dharma. So as far as the first child is concerned, this is a very important year for following Dharma. Which Dasha will make him follow Dharma? Which Dasha will, will be important for showing his Dharma? The Venus Dasha, but that is again gone, gone. So later when Mirti Dasha comes again that can be a very pivotal, pivotal Dasha in following the Dharma and Sani is not following Dharma. Sani is basically spiritual rise because Sani is with Ketu and he is affecting Lagna. So he affects the Lagna itself, his very existence he is affected by the discipline of Sani, the renunciation of Sani and Ketu. So when Sani Dasha comes the results of Sani and Ketu are given. He will not follow Dharma or anything then he will become spiritual, he will become like a yogi during that time. But Venus and Mercury are the planets who make him follow his dharma. So during this year, during uh, during this time, another thing, during this time you left your son, right? During, you, you, you were with him, you went, you went to India with him, but you left him there and came back during after this year started. Did you come back recently after August 22nd? Yeah, today. Okay, you, you came back today. Okay, so he took his son to India. He wanted to go to a Vedic school where they teach Vedas. So did, did he join a school? No, he joined a private teacher. Okay, he joined a private teacher. Okay. So he is going to learn those things now. And now he is living away from you. So you should be able to see that now. The fact that he is learning traditional knowledge, he is learning spiritual knowledge, etc. can be seen from the strong Dharmasthana, the strong Seniketu aspect in Lagna and Jupiter in Lagna. And actually there is another thing. If Jupiter and Saturn influence Lagna, it gives the effect of Brahma Yoga. There is a yoga called Brahma Yoga. Here Jupiter is in Lagna aspected by Saturn. So there is, he gets the results of Brahma Yoga. But that apart, all the things that happen to him we can see. But as far as he is concerned, he is, missing, he is going to miss his son now. During this year, he is going to miss his son. Can, you see, can anybody explain me why that is happening? Yes, correct. Yes. Yeah. The Paka, the particular Paka, which is showing that particular child is in the 8th house from Lagna. So during this year, there will be either problems with that child, there will be a lot of arguments, a lot of disharmony on account of that child or basically he is away, he will miss him. So there is some anxiety or some worry or some, uh, some disappointment on account of that child because Jupiter is in the 8th house. So this is how you can look at the Tithi Pravesha chart and see what will happen during a particular year. Okay? Now, Rathmar, yes? We go to the last point. And, uh, Which point? The last point. Which okay. Point. Jupiter, Aquarius is showing, Aquarius is the lagna to be taken okay. to see what happens to that particular child. That we did. Yeah. Now, to see what happens to him on account of children, we should look at lagna. 
Lagna is basically he, his entire existence as far as progeny is concerned. So if you are happy on account of children or Vazir or you miss them or you spend lot of time with them, you share lot of love with them, all these things from your point of view, whatever happening, whatever is happening in your life with respect to children should be seen from this Lagna. And from this Lagna, Aquarius, you see what happens to that child. So now, this particular child's Lagna, Aquarius, is placed in the 8th house from Lagna. So that means, especially in a Dusthana. So that means he is either going to miss that child during the year or he is going to keep arguing with that child. Having lot of unhappiness or or, or disappointment or sadness on account of that particular child. That is what you can say. Can yes, you Kiran? tie the separation of the child and also the child you know, steady in India or something, being separated from his father and uh, doing this darling study, can you tie the two events together? See, when you come to, when you come to father, uh, when you come to his, his, his chart and you see what happens to his son from there, you cannot say everything about the child. Suppose he meets a girl there, he falls in love, you may not be able to even see it here. This is basically like I said in the last class, in a previous class, what you see in Saptansha about a particular child is what is happening in his life from his point of view, from his angle. So whatever is happening, you don't expect to see everything in this chart. For that you better go to that person's chart, directly go to the native's chart to see what, whatever is happening. From this all you know is, he is following dharma. He, he, he became dharmic and he is becoming like a yogi, he is becoming like a sadhaka or tapasvi. So the, and he is becoming a very wise and learned and mature person because Jupiter is in Lagra. So that is what his father is basically, from his father's point of view, that is the satya. When you look at his son, there may be much more to it. Okay? So we need to look at his... Yeah. And if you, you can also look at the natal charts. Yeah, we are, we are sure that this is right. So if you want to, not just restricted to this year, but you want to see the entire life of the first child, then take this, take this Lagna, and where is the Lagna Lord? I mean, not Lagna Lord. Is Lagna art sign or event sign? Yeah. Event sign. So should we go backward? Yes. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five. So, Shani. Pardon me? Yes, he is in Cancer. Okay, so this becomes the Lagna. This becomes the Lagna. If you take this as the Lagna and if you analyze, if you analyze the whole Saptamsa chart, that will tell you, that will tell you a lot about the child. And if you want to see when, when, what will happen, then you can use, you can use the Vimshotri Dasha. See, for example, let us say how Sandasha will be. I ask you, how will be Sandhasa for the first child? Can somebody tell me what, what will happen during Sandhasa for the first child? So taking Cancer as Lagna for the first child, Sun is in the 8th house. 8th house, wow, what does 8th house show? It's a Dusthana but also it shows Occult knowledge. 8th house is also the house of Occult knowledge. And I am, put, I am putting focus on occult because the sign is conducive to occult. The other planet is conducive to occult. Ketu is there. And it is a, it is a sign owned by Rahu. So when the sun is in Ketu, is in Rahusthana with Ketu, during Sandasha, there can be more spirituality and occult, occult experiences. There can be occult sadhana and inexplicable yogic experiences. So during Sandasha, during 2012 to 2018, you can say that there will be lot of a lot, lot of sadhana during that time. And right now, right now he is running Venus Dasha. And let us see before Dasha, what is the nature of the person? Can you say something based on Cancer Lagna and all the planets there? Can somebody say something about the nature of the person? Yes, Vijay, you are, you are smiling, so you have something to say. He has lot of planets there. So? Probably Moon is the most prominent. Yes, Moon is the. Moon and Venus. Venus. Moon and Venus are really strong because because it's a Jalarasi. When Venus is in a Jalarasi, he is basically strong. So compared to Jupiter, Jupiter is also strong, exalted, but he is Vakri. So compared to Jupiter and Saturn, so probably he will strengthen Moon rather than trying to be his own. Right. So Jupiter being a friend of Moon, he will strengthen Moon. So so Moon and Venus. 
So can you say that this person is very sensitive? Usually Cancer and Moon, moon and Venus, Moon will make you. Saturn and Venus are together and Ketu is accepting it. Yeah. Yes, very good point. So, so the Tapas Yoga can be seen here. So Vijay's point was in Lagna, Saturn and Venus are there and from the 8th house Ketu is having Rashi Drishti on them. So there is a Tapas Yoga. So, so there is not only in a particular year, but natally there is a Tapas Yoga. So he will be a, he will be a nice Tapasvi. And, and the, the strongest planets there are Moon and Venus. So what kind of abilities do they show? For me, what we every day, yes, what does that mean? Do you think he will be a good orator or a good artist or a good, uh, what? Is he a creative person? Very creative and imaginative? Because Moon and Venus definitely show creativity. Lot of Janatattva is basically creativity. So, so based on Moon and Venus in Lagna, you can say that the first child is a very creative person. At least from his point of view. The reality you may see from his chart, but at least from his point of view, he is a very creative person, very imaginative person and Moon and Venus in Lagna can also show a poet, either a poet or an artist, some basically some Venusian things, some colors, some Kalakar basically, some artist. And four planets are in Quadrant, right? Yeah. In Lagna. Yeah. So that becomes the Sun and Sun. Yes. There is a, so based on, when we see the person's chart, we can say, more confidently, whether he becomes a sannyasi or whether he becomes a sansari or whether he becomes a sansari and then karma yogi. That you can see from the person's chart, more confidently. But just based on this chart, four planets being in Kendra is a very strong Parivraja Yoga. It's a, if you see four planets conjoined in any Kendra, that is a four or more planets conjoined in any Kendra, that is a sannyasi Yoga. Such a person will, will not be interested in material things. He will be spiritual and he can become a sannyasi. So that yoga is here in this particular chart. So at least from the father's point of view, he will look at sun as a sannyasi and he may, he may actually be worried about it. But whether he really becomes a sannyasi or not, let us see from the son's chart. But he has that, in, that renunciation, the spirit of renunciation and the spiritual spirit will be inherent in the person because of those four planets being there and it definitely helps that Ketu is in the eighth house. Not only are four planets in Lagna, but Ketu, the Karaka for Sanyata, the Karaka for spirituality, Moksha, he is in 8,000 aspecting all those planets. Okay? So, so in general, how, how does the native feel about this man? He is really, that is a third house from the Lagna. Yeah, that is good. It's not a, third house is not a Dusthana. Yeah, so he should be feeling good about him. Right? Yes, yes, yes. Very good point. So, we said that in the, in the year's chart, in the particular year's chart, we said that from Lagna, the Lagna that shows child is in the 8th house. So we said they will be away, they will be away from each other. But naturally, if you look for the whole life, if you put focus on the whole life, from Lagna, the Lagna that shows the child, that particular child is in 3rd house. So if the Lagna showing a particular a particular child is in the 3rd house, it is basically an enthusing influence. The influence of that particular child on you is that of giving you a lot of determination, making you very enthusiastic. Pardon me? Only he will be influencing, sun will influence him on the future. Yes, sun will have a very positive influence on the on the father. Very positive, enthusiastic, enthu enthusing kind, kind of influence. Very optimistic, positive kind of influence. Okay, now, uh, before I close, I want to address any specific questions. We generally discuss whatever came to our mind. And if you have any specific queries, any specific thing that you want the class to take a look at, we want, we will do that. If you have any specific question. So he wants to know when he will get a job. So we looked at this current year's Siddhi Pravesha. If you remember, we looked at last year's Siddhi Pravesha and we found that the sister Venus was in the third house of short leave. So during that time basically he stopped working. So now he wants to find out when he will get a new job. So for that, we already kind of looked at it. We saw that the yoga, the ruler of the year Mars is taking part in a nice Raja Yoga and especially that Raja Yoga is with Jupiter. Venus here will give the result of Jupiter. And Jupiter is the fifth planet of recognition. 
Jupiter is the fifth lord of recognition. So, when you get a new job, fifth house is very important. Fifth house has to be involved because that is the recognition of your abilities. So, Mars Dasha is a very good candidate. Jupiter Dasha is a very good candidate. See, for example, Mars Jupiter sometime in the middle of November is a very good, is a, there is a very good chance. Even Venus can give the result on behalf of Mars. But overall, if you look at the November, November 7 to December 5 time frame, there is a very auspicious time frame. In case he doesn't get a job until then, he should get a job then. And if he already has a job by then, he should be more recognized during that time and get more, uh, yeah, he should be, he should get more recognition during that time. And will this job, if he gets a job, will it be an increase in the status or slight decrease in the status? Basically, should he settle for something slightly lower than his expectations or his past record or should it be, will it be higher? Can somebody try to take a stab at that? No. When you are talking about status and people's impression, what should, what should you look at? Yes, Arudh Hakna. So, where is Arudh Hakna? Arudh Hakna is in Cape Town. So, where is this Mars? These Rajoga giving planets placed from Arudh Hakna. They are in the 12th house. 12th house is the house of loss or giving up. So, 12th from Arudha is basically some kind of loss in image, loss in status. So, basically, the Mars Dasha is a very good Dasha, but there can be some, so overall during this year, there can be some lowering of the image. Some image may not, image may, may, may be slightly lower. So, one thing is he may have to settle for something slightly lower than his expectation. That is one thing that we can say based on the chart. And the second thing is overall this year will be a good year. He will, it's not like some people when they are, when they get laid off, they have to wait for a couple of years to find job. Especially in the last few years that was the case. I know some examples. We even saw, saw your example in the last class. So in some cases that, that happens. But here, the, based on the annual chart that came soon after the layoff, we can say that, do, do, should we say that he will basically struggle for one whole year? Definitely not. Because Mars is taking part in such a nice Raj Yoga, even though he is bad with some Arudh Lagna, still he is Lagna Lord. So he will give a new beginning, but it will be slightly lower. So, if not earlier, Mars Desha is a very good candidate. Yeah, actually, and actually, you know what? Moon Desha is... Let's forget job. How will be the moon dasha? Can somebody tell me how moon dasha will be? For me? First look at lagna. Moon is the lagna lord in the past chart. Yes. He is the ninth lord in the fifth house. Moon is the ninth lord in the fifth house. Right? And ninth lord and fourth lord are joining together. What is ninth? Ninth is dharma and bath. And fourth is Sukha. So, uh, basically, the conjunction of the fourth lord and ninth lord shows, basically, getting some dharma that makes him so happy. Fourth is the house of Sukha or happiness or comfort. And ninth is the house of dharma. So, their conjunction, the lords of them conjoining and giving a Raj Yoga, that shows, basically, some comfort on account of dharma. That means, his duty is defined. If he has a job, then he has a certain duty to follow. And that makes him comfortable, that gives him peace, some peace. So that is what it shows. And this Raj Yoga is taking part, taking place in the fifth house of recognition. So moon is actually bringing a link between fifth house and ninth house. Fifth house of recognition and ninth house of offer. So because moon is get, bringing a link between the two, actually moon is a very good candidate. So right now we are, he is still in Sandasha. Sun is not really that great for getting a new job. So, so Sandasha is not so positive, but Moon Dasha is actually a very good candidate. So Moon and Mars Dasha, by the end of Mars Dasha, he should have a job. Either in Moon Dasha or Mars Dasha, he should have a job. Before December 5, he should land in a job. That is what we can more or less confidently say based on this to the, to the Pravesha chart. Does everybody un agree? Understand? Uh, yeah, yes, Karen. You said that there will be a lowering of image, but what I see is there is year 5 and HL, right? In the ninth, and I'm happening in the ninth house. Yeah. Uh, then year 5 is manifestation, so it means that he is going to get an offer, which all, it also happens to be oral, I mean, so my problem is very low. Yes. 
Horlagna, yeah, Horlagna is volatile, like you said, let's forget that. But your points are good, let me address them. Now, I'm not just looking at Mundasa. Overall, how the year will be seen from Mars. Who is the ruler of the year as well as Lagna Lord in the Samsa. So, if he is weak, overall the year will be weak. If he is strong, overall the year will be strong. Yeah, and what more, uh, there is a gradually of Mars is there on the way, so. Yeah, so? So, I personally, I, I feel that yeah, it's going to be very good actually from the moon. The moon is, um, see, the, Mars is, there's a photo of the second moon and also yeah. there's a, is, you know, just yes, I'm not saying it will be bad. What I'm saying is because they are in the world from Arur Lagna, okay. there will be some lowering of the status. This is, for seeing this placement from Arur Lagna, I'm not looking at a particular Dasha Lord. I'm looking at the overall Lagna Lord as well as the overall Hora Lord, the overall ruler of the year. So because he is slightly badly placed from Arur Lagna, there is some lowering of status. But your point is right. Moon is not only the... Ninth lot in the fifth hall, but he also wants A7 and A5. Okay. Like we said earlier, fifth hall is recognition, but A5 is the formal recognition. So if he got a if he got a job offer, if he if he, if somebody at an interview said we like you, the statement we like you is an arudha. It's a tangible thing. It's not in somebody's mind. So that the uh, that can be seen from A5. So moon being the lot of A5 and being placed in fifth hall. Moon can certainly give a good offer. Uh, moon can certainly give an opportunity. But whether that opportunity overall throughout this year, whether this opportunity will be something that is like a promotion or something slightly lowering in the status, that you see only based on the based on the role of year, how he is placed. So based on that, you see how the overall year will be. But unless Moon was strong, he would not even give the job. And even Mars is strong. So. Both of them are capable of giving a job, but I, I am cautioning him that he should basically keep his mind open about something that may be slightly less than his expectations. One, uh, one more question. Yes. Does it indicate any uh, business growth in this time, other than service? Yes, it does. Why did I say that? Okay, but I'm I'm focusing on the roller of the year to see the whole trend for the year. So Mars, I'm focusing on Mars. Now I said that Mars. Yeah. Mars, Mars, I said is taking part in Raj Yoga, right? And and just to refresh you, that Raj Yoga. Mars is Putrakaraka and Jupiter is Atmakaraka. And we said earlier that Atmakaraka Putrakaraka conjunction is a Raj Yoga. We said there is the Raj Yoga but weekly in the Rashi chart. But in Dashamsa chart again they are coming together. Mars and Jupiter are coming together. This Venus remind you, uh, to remind you he acts like Jupiter. Yeah. So the Mars Jupiter Raj Yoga is not only in Rashi but also in in Dashamsa chart. So because of that this is definitely a very important Raj Yoga. But how is this Raj Yoga coming into being? Who is bringing it? Venus. Without Venus this Raj Yoga would not be there. Because because Venus is there, because of the Parivartana, that is why the Raj Yoga is there. Because Mars and Jupiter are not directly conjoined. So this Raj Yoga is brought in by somebody else. Right? Venus. And what house does Venus own? Seventh house. He is the seventh lord. He is somebody that he knows. Some partner or some colleague or some associate or somebody, some relation. <coughs> so it's because this Raj Yoga is coming because of some relationship. And seventh house, when seventh house is strong and the seventh lord takes part in a Raj Yoga in a particular year, seventh house is basically like I said earlier, it's the house of desire. Right. So there will be strong desire during this, this year. The sixth house is relatively weak, even though Mars wants it. Sixth house is relatively weak. Seventh house is actually stronger. Because both Jupiter, Jupiter and Venus are associated with the seventh house. So in this particular Raj Yoga, more than the sixth house, seventh house is playing a crucial role. So, if he has any, if this person has any intentions of doing some business, etc., this will be actually a 
good year to do that. And to confirm it, let us look at the Amsha ruler. <coughs> now, Jupiter is in Ananta Amsha, Venus is in Kubera Amsha. So the seventh lord Venus, who is facilitating this Rajoga, which Amsha is he in? Kubera Amsha. If you have planet, I told you earlier, seventh house, strong seventh house shows strong desire. But it doesn't have to be business. Strong, <coughs> strong desire can be just to help somebody. So I think in your case I mentioned that point. Strong seven doesn't necessarily mean, say thumb rule, sixth week and seven strong means he will have his own business. But it's a thumb rule. The seventh law should also, the desire has to be financial. Then only he will go into business. So here, the seventh lord Venus is in Kubera Amsa. He is in the Amsa of Kubera. Kubera Amsa, what is Kubera Amsa? Money. money. So, there is certain money mindedness that Venus is bringing in as far as this area is concerned. And that is facilitating the Raj Yoga. So, if he, if, he, if he has any intentions of any business or uh, getting into any business or, or putting his energies back on some business that he did in the past, if he has any such intention. This is a very good year. And Mars and Mars, Venus and Jupiter the self. These three the self are very auspicious for that. In that three So do you have any other question? <coughs> but not only is Venus in Kuberamsa the seventh lord, but there is Jupiter in Anantamsa is also in the seventh house. You have Venus is the seventh lord, but Jupiter is the planet in seventh. And he is in Anantamsa. So there are two planets. Venus is a materialistic planet and he is in Kubera Amsha, Mani Amsha. And Jupiter is a spiritual planet. He is the one is teacher of demons, one is the teacher of gods. And he is in Ananta Amsha. And both have a role to play in the seventh house. So this year as far as desires in karma are concerned, this will be a very crucial year. There will be, there will be mixed influences on him. There will be a lot of internal struggle. Whenever you see either Jupiter Rahu or Sun Rahu or Moon Rahu or Jupiter Venus, any two planets who show two extremes, having an influence on the same house, they will basically pound that person. So Jupiter will try to take him in the spiritual upliftment path and Venus will try to make him interested in making more money. So both will try their best. Who will win? For me? Can you say, can I say who will win from this part? Uh, who will win? Venus is basically, who will win? It's tough to say. Probably. You have to see the natal chart also. It's very tough to say just based on the three private chart. And for all you know, it may not be over this year. The clash may go on for a few more years. So we better look at the natal chart to see that. So let us not go through that. That's not important. But basically, if you, if there is an internal clash within you, between spirituality and money, don't worry too much about it. Don't think too much about it because that is bound to be there. Don't think, why is this happening to me? You see what I am saying? Sometimes certain things are destined to happen, but we we spend more time worrying why it is happening. Just just whatever happens will happen for good. And uh, especially during Jupiter Dasa, Venus Dasa and Mars Dasa, there is, those are auspicious signs for doing anything relating to business. Especially Mars Dasa is the key period in the year. November, December is a key period during the year. That will be like the main period of the whole year. So, if you, are, if you have anything in mind, try to line it up for that period because it's a very auspicious period. And during this whole year, because Mars is a Yogaraka, Mars is a Yogaraka and he is uh, he is the ruler of the year and he is taking part in a Raj Yoga in the Rasanta part. During this whole year, if you basically pray to Mars, it will be beneficial to you. Uh, like Kartikeya or Hanuman or Narasimha. If you pray to those gods, that will give you that will give you good results. And overall, based on the natal chart, let us see the <coughs> Amartya Karka. Who is Amartya Karka? Venus is the Amartya Karka. And there is no replacement. Okay. Where is Venus in Navamsa? Okay. The sixth sum, the rule is just like the twelfth from Atmakarka is Ishta Devata and ninth from Atmakarka is Dharma Devata, similarly the sixth from Amartya Karaka is Parana Devata. Amartya Karaka is basically uh, that is your career, that is your karma. So 
So the six from there, the, the, the planet who has influence over that house, that planet will give you all the livelihood. So if you have, if somebody is out of job or if somebody wants a job, if somebody wants good livelihood, then they can pray to Parana Devata. Parana Devata will not give moksha, but the Parana Devata will give you livelihood. They will they will make sure that you have enough enough to eat and enough to enough to live. So here the planet is Mercury and Mars are there, and you can see that Atmakarka uh, Ishta Devata is also coming there. So Ishta Devata, Dharma Devata, Parana Devata, all the three they all the three are coming into that Mercury Mars combination. So it will be very auspicious if you pray to Narasimha. If you pray to Narasimha, it will be very auspicious. It will be, it will give you all round success. It will be, it will be auspicious from all points of view. Okay. And before, when we see something like somebody getting laid off or something, another important thing that you should see is, is there any curse from the past life that got activated recently? If that is the case, even if you are not able to figure it out based on the other charts, it may be actually more. It may last longer. If there is a curse that started recently. It may last longer. So it's always a prudent idea to just verify that particular thing. So I'll, let me just do that. So for that, there is a dasha in the nakshatra dasha, raj dasha, and the third tab is other dasha. In the other dasha tab, there is a dasha called mola dasha. And we already talked about the chapas curses. If, for example, Venus and the seventh lord and the seventh house. They are afflicted by the Grahadrishti or occupation of occupancy of Saturn, Rahu, Ketu or Mars, all the male fixed. Then that shows Karsa's wife from the past life. If the fourth house, fourth lord and moon, they are afflicted by male fixed, here we see only Grahadrishti, not Rajadrishti. Grahadrishti or occupation, occupancy. Then it is mother's curse from the past life. If it is sun and ninth, ninth house, ninth lord and sun involved, then it is father's curse from the past life. And similarly, Mercury associated, Mercury and the sixth lord, sixth house, that is Matula Shapa, that is maternal uncle's curse from the past life. So there are, and also Jupiter being afflicted by two male six, by Grahadrishti or by conjunction, that is Brahmana Shapa Yoga. Basically, you got, you were cursed by a landed person in the past life. So look at those Shapas and see if the Moladacha corresponding to a particular curse is running. If it is running, then a particular curse is sitting on your head. Somebody, you did something bad to somebody and somebody basically was so unhappy with you or so frustrated that you have to pay for it in this life. And when you say curse, when you see Indian movies, you see a great Maharshi taking water in his hand and saying, and throwing it on a person and saying, so and so thing will happen to you. That is how they show in movies. But curse doesn't have to be something that is delivered verbally. If somebody, if you, if you are mean to your wife and your wife is unhappy with you, but she doesn't say a word and she goes through suffering, that becomes a curse in the next life. That's the karma. Curse is basically karma. You did something bad and you basically, you, whatever you do to others, you have to experience the fruits of it. You reap what you sow. That is the principle of karma. And sapas or curses are a way in which that is reinforced. So, let us come to the come to the dashas. First, is there any curse? First, let us look at Venus. Is Venus aspected by two male fix or at least one male fix? Saturn is affecting Venus, right? Now, seventh house is seventh house affected by a male fix? No. Rahu does not aspect the seventh house, Saturn does not aspect the seventh house, Mars does not aspect the seventh house. So there is no Karatrasyapa Yoga, that is curse of wife. The curse of wife is not there. Now mother, the fourth house, is fourth house aspected by a male fish? Yes, Mars is aspecting the fourth house. Fourth Lord Jupiter, is he, is he affected by a male fish? Yes, yes, Saturn, Saturn is with Jupiter. So fourth house and fourth lord are afflicted, uh, afflicted by Saturn and Mars. Now Karka of fourth house, who is he? Moon. Is moon aspected by a male fish? Does Mars aspect him? No. Does Saturn aspect him? No. Does Rahu aspect him? No. So there is no Mars Shapa. No Pithra Shapa Yoga. Sun. Sun is with Rahu and the ninth lord is with Rahu and the ninth house is with Rahu. 
So Rahu is giving Pitrishap Yoga, which is father's curse. But it is not very strong because it's only one planet. If not the 9,000 lord, at least the ninth Kharka should be aspected by two planets. Then the yoga is stronger. So there is a weak Pitrishap Yoga. And when you see a Shapa, when you see a curse, you can also figure out whether the curse was given because of because father felt cheated or father felt sad or father felt angry. If Mars is one of the afflicting planets, then it is anger. Saturn shows sorrow and Rahu shows shock. Rahu and Ketu show shock, defeat basically. So here Saturn is not aspecting sun. So father was not sad. Mars is not aspecting sun. So father was not angry. But Rahu is with sun. So father felt that he was let down. He felt that he was deceived. He felt that he played a game with father. He was, he was not happy about it. He was not, he felt cheated. That's, that's basically all. So it's not, a, it's not such a strong yoga. And in any case, it will not satisfy, it will not satisfy uh, right now. It, if at all that weak curse, if at all it satisfied, the right time would have been when he was a small boy from the age of 1967 to 1979. So if something happened, some bad results were ha bad results happened like some bad relation with father or father not being nice to him or any bad relation with father, if at all it happened, is because of this yoga. And if it did not happen, that means this yoga is not strong enough, it did not satisfy. But if there was another planet there along with sun, Saturn aspecting and or Saturn there, then it would definitely have satisfied. And it would have satisfied in Rahudasa. But now it is Sani Dasa. So Sani is not showing any curse. Now let us see if there is Brahmana Sapa. Jupiter is with Saturn, but is there any other second malefic aspecting him? No. So overall there is no curse. There is, there is no curse that is running right now. If at all any curse was there, it was in his childhood. So he is fine. So there are there is nothing really holding him back based on a past karma. But just to be sure, just one more thing you can see is, what kind of karma is Shani carrying from past life? So Shashtyamsa, because Shani is Morgasa is running. I, say, I am looking at Shani because right now the Morgasa that is running is Shani. Morgasa what it shows is, it shows the Mula of what happens in your life. Mula is root. It shows the root cause of whatever is happening in your life. So something that you did in the past life, some karma that you have to experience now, there is certain karma, you did some, something. So because of it, something is is destined to happen to you in this life and that destiny is shown by Moldasa. So Shani is running his life right now. Shani is 18 years of Dasa. So the, the karma that Shani shows is Yakshamsa. He is in Yakshamsa. Did I make a mistake? Okay. Okay. The, the, then it's Chandra Rekha. Is Chandra Rekha a beneficial Beneficial Sashamsa or Malefic Sashamsa? Pardon me? It should be beneficial. Yes, it's a beneficial. Chandrarekha means? Uh, the line of the moon. So Chandrarekha Amsa, if a planet is in Chandrarekha Amsa, it, it, it is a beneficial Amsa, but Chandrarekha means it's not Pona Chandra. Pona Chandra Amsa is fully beneficial. Chandrarekha means it's a beneficial Amsa, but it shows aspiration to grow bigger. Chandrarekha is incomplete. So, Chani, the karma carried by Chani is that of incompleteness and desire to become more complete, but it is auspicious. So overall, during the Chani Moradasha, during the Moradasha of Chani, 1998 to 2016, there will be some expressions. And are those expressions relating to money, relating to career, relating to spirituality? We can see based on other charts. But all you know based on Sashyamsa Deity and the Moradasha is, during this period, there will be some aspirations of becoming full. There will be some awareness, awareness that he is a line. He is not a full moon. He is a line of moon. And there will be an aspiration to become fuller. So there will be, it's a period of strong desire and working towards fulfilling that desire. But basically no obstacles. It's a, uh, there are other anshas which are more inauspicious. For example, look at, look at Mars Amsha, Mars. He is in Kulagramsha. Mars is in Kulagramsha. So Mars shows, what does he show? Breaking of the family, destruction of the family, destruction of the lineage. So that is the kind of karma that Mars is carrying. So during Mars Dasa there will be some bad events in the family, etc. Let us not look when the Dasa is coming, but 
That is what you can say. So there will be some good, even, good dasha, some bad dasha. But Shani dasha is overall a good dasha. Chandrakha is a benefic, benefic system. Sir. So it's a good dasha, but it's a dasha of awareness of incompleteness and, and aspiration to become full. So that is, that is the moral dasha. And we don't have any major worries. The main reason I went to moral dasha was to see if there is a particular curse. If there is a particular curse, for example, somebody may have Sapa Yoga. And uh, somebody I know was running Sarpa Yoga and the Moldasha of that planet came and he was out of job for two and a half years and finally he found a job. So if that is the case, you should, you should advise the person to do some remedy for that particular yoga, particular Shapa or the particular Sarpa Yoga which is causing obstruction to the progress. But here that is not the case. So he doesn't have to do anything really special. So with that I will end today's class and to remind you, there is on September 16, 17, 18 and 19 from Thursday, not this Thursday but the next Thursday to Sunday, we are having Sri Jagannath Center Jyotish Conference. We, ha we are having it in Myanmar. Uh, I, I sent a mail to you. If any of you did not receive, receive a mail, you can send a mail to pvr at charter.net. I can reply to that. Probably then your, your email is not in my list. So we, we are having that conference and it's a free event but we will be taking donations to support the rent, etc. So if any of you are interested in attending, there will be speakers from various parts of the world. There will be Sanjayji from India, Sarbani from India, Vishti Larsen from Denmark, you know, Vishti Larsen, Freedom Call, he's from New Jersey, but he spends most of the time in India, so he's practically from India. Freedom Call, then I will be speaking, and Brendan Feely, he's a, he's a renowned Ayurveda and astrology specialist, medical astrology specialist. He will be talking on some medical astrology topics. He will be, Brandon Feely will be here and did I forget anybody? I think that's it. So these are the speakers. There are five or six different speakers and the agenda, the topics that will be covered, I sent. And most of you, some topics may be a little bit advanced for you, but most of the topics should be understandable to a large extent by all of you because of the background you had in the last couple of months. So we will... If, if, if any of you can attend the, the conference, it will be great. It will be, be nice to have some people there rather than empty chairs. And if you can't attend on Thursday and Friday, if you can at least come on Saturday and Sunday, that will be great. So if you are interested, please send me a mail and I can send you the address, etc. And let me know as soon as possible. And we'll have another class next, next Sunday. And the, uh, and the Sunday coming after that, we will not have the class because of the conference. But next Sunday, we will have the class at the same time, same place. And what I will do in the next class is I will prepare you for the conference. Basically, for example, there are two, there are two speakers who are going to talk about Vimshamsa. They will be talking about spiritual things and Vimshamsa. Uh, so we haven't really spent too much time on Vimshamsa, so I will brush up a few basics of Vimshamsa. So I will talk about a few things that will prepare you in case you are coming for the conference to understand what's going on at the conference. So we'll do, in, do it in the next class. So same time, same place. Namaste. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti.